Hello and welcome back to Girls and Glasses. Last time I remember, we did the one thing that made sense. Tutor with benefits. And so, let's move on, shall we? Once their pair is over, I head to Kana's seat. She slopped over Gussie. Kana? gets up surprisingly quickly. I guess she wasn't asleep. How'd the quiz go? Our quiz just finished last period. It was harder than I expected, so I'm a little worried Kana might have had trouble. Well, as your tutor, I am a little interested. A math teacher's notorious for taking ages to grade his tests. We probably won't get our scores back until next week. I see. That's good then. Ken walks over and joins our conversation. Hmm. Just wondering how Kana kind of did on her tests is all. For some reason, Kim fell silent. Handsome dude with amazing grades and crazy athletic abilities. However, you have one fatal flaw that ruins all of that. You look him square in the eye and say in a serious tone, You're serious, you're secretly a raging pervert. That's right. Just stand there quietly for a bit and reflect on that. Seeing it at a loss for words, I feel this sense of triumph well up within me, but before I can lord it over him. Why? I too am shocked into silence. Lunch break. As I'm looking for an NPC in the cafeteria, I spot Iora. She's sitting alone in a corner. Iora, senpai. I actually passed by her on the way to school this morning, too, so this makes the second time today. Might have seen her. Point to the other. I point to the chair across from Yoda Senpai and she nods. Alright, I'll be right back after getting my ramen. I grab my lunch and head back to my seat as I approach Yoda Senpai, cocks her head to the side. Yeah, as you can see, no one wanted to eat with me today. I wouldn't exactly say I have a lot. Something like that. I do like sticking by the friends I do have. 
She stares intently at me. Uh, okay. I'm happy, but I'm also not sure how to respond. Pardon? That was the most random topic change ever. We finish up our respective lunches and head out to the cafeteria. Head out of the cafeteria. I was thinking of heading to the student council room for a bit. Sorry, I come hang out with you after school, I promise. Gotcha. Yoda turns around and walks off after I say that. I can never for excuse me. I can never figure out what Yoda's thinking. The only, I'm, the only predictable thing about her is that she's always unpredictable. I walk over to the student council room. Excuse me. Slide open the door without waiting for a reply. I know, I know. Sorry. The president seems to be in a good mood today. Look down and see a flyer in her hands. Is that the bulletin? She holds out the flyer to me to see. Smile on her face. I exclaim in surprise. The president's bulletin looks amazing. There's a large headline at the top, a picture next to it. She's had little personal comments here and there to the article describing the student council's activities and the whole thing in blast to read. But what really makes it stand out are the illustrations she drew. <laughs> She looks uneasily at her own pictures. Mostly cartoonish depiction of animals. There's a seal, a hippo, and even a bear. There's some flowers decorating the edge of the paper too. I think they're cute. I definitely think it makes it look a lot less formal. But man. I didn't think you'd finish writing it so soon. You're amazing. I see. I should try and be more decisive like that too. Were you able to go do that? Were you about to go do that? He says, voice full of enthusiasm. All right, I'll help too. Yeah, works for me. According to the list I just took from her, there's exactly 20 bulletin boards on campus. There's even some by the tennis court, yard, front gate. Sounds good. I'll start with the ones inside then.
We leave the room and split up, each of us covering one half of the school. The first place I head to is the gym. She'd said there was a bulletin board somewhere in the gym, right? I step inside the gym and find the bulletin board pretty quickly. It's right next to the entrance, so it's hard to miss. How did I never notice this thing before? It sure says a lot about how little I pay attention to the bulletins. Being a little guilty, I try and stick the president's flyer in as conspicuous a place as possible. I make my way around the school, picking up flyers as I go. Finally return back to the student council room. Welcome back. The president returns minutes after I do. Yep, same for you. I hope people actually read this. I'm sure it will. Not that I have any basis for that statement. I just feel like the president deserves to be rewarded for all the hard work she's been putting in. Mm. Sorry, that late? I glance over at the clock. There's only three minutes left until lunch ends. How do I miss the first bell? Next class P, so I'll have to run if I want to make it on time. Alright, let me know later if you need help with anything else. Hmm? What's up? Are you okay? She smiles at me. Well, you say so. She's definitely got to be tired. Knowing her, she must have stayed here late last night working on the boulder. I should probably thank her for all the hard work she's put into the council next time I see her. P ends leaving only one more period before classes conclude for the day. Ken walks up to my seat during the break between classes. What's up? Really? I didn't see her at all. Say anything to her? I guess that's true. Sorry, you still know. Do you two need an instant on the road? Playing hockey? So you put on the rich don't go. She's the kind of person that probably wouldn't realize skipping is a bad thing in the first place. Not a good one. You know, skip. Well, I'll ask her about it next time I see her. Amazing skills, my ass. I'm terrible at soccer. In fact, I almost ended up scoring in our own goal. I sincerely hope not. Ken chuckles as he walks back to the seat. Our room comes to an end, singling the end of classes. Now then, what to do? Well, let's see. What if we were to save?
walk over to the student council room. <clears throat> Wrap my knuckles on the door. Excuse me. Hmm. No response. The president had told me to wait for a reply before opening the door, so I decided to wait. However, even after some time, there's still no reply. Is she not in? I put my hand on the door handle and find it's unlocked. President, coming in. President? I open the door and see her sleeping in her chair. Her expression is a lot more relaxed than usual. The sound of her faint breathing is the only noise in the room. Even asleep, her hands are gripping a pile of documents to be checked. She spent most of last night making the bulletin. She ran around during lunch putting it up. And even now she was doing work before she fell asleep. She must be far more exhausted than I know. And even she initially thought. You were at a rest. I picked up an I pick up a near uh, I pick up a nearby blanket and cover the president with it. Sam, bye. Crap! Did I wake her? I hurriedly turned back around. It looks like she was just talking in her sleep. I think I'll let her rest for a while longer. <sighs> Around 30 minutes later. Finally awake. I put down my cup of tea and walk over to the president. Uh, order. She looks over at me with blurry eyes. Morning. She looks down at the blanket on top of her. Senpai. She mutters and smiles softly. Sorry, took it out of, of permission. The president suddenly stands up. Yes? Yeah, you, you fell asleep. You just said that, you know. She looks at me in surprise, a crimson blush slowly spreading up her face. For some reason, her glare is accusatory. Um, should I lie here and say I didn't? What? Oh, so how that feel takes me a second to process a question. What? 
parte. Uh -huh. She's being surprisingly pushy about this. I, I think it looks cute. Answer honestly. However, the president hangs her head. Huh? I mean that as a compliment, you know. Uh, hmm? How should come to that conclusion? <sighs> and just like that, the president's back to her usual self. I'm not sure I can't. Okay. The smell of hers is terrifying. The room is dyed orange from the glow of the same sun by the time the president finishes work. Mm. Oh, it's nothing. Literally, all I did was check the titles of the document. She points to the folded blanket lying on her desk in front of her. Mm. It's a little embarrassing to be thanked so sincerely. Just lie down properly next time. It's bad for your back to sleep in a chair. I already changed the subject to talking about bath owners. Really? Well, either way, I'm sure you find a bed to sleep in next time. Ooh, not a bad idea at all. I could come every day for a nap. She says with a smile. Me? Odd. Hi. How exactly am I odd? We head out to finish putting the flyers up on the gate outside. We head out to finish putting the flyers up on the outside bulletin boards. And then we head to the front gate. Now, I really want to know. But no matter how many times I ask, the president won't tell me. Yeah, be careful on your way back. Yeah, see you tomorrow. I wave goodbye watching her head off to the train station. Guess I'll head back too. She turned around and began walking off. <sighs> I lay down on my bed and stare absentmindedly at the ceiling. In order to distract myself from the unpleasant memories that always come back, I try sleep. I usually end up studying a bit more until I'm completely exhausted. At this point, it's become a habit. Though, for some reason, I haven't been having any nightmares these past few days. Even though nothing's really changed from before. Not only when I'm spacing out like this, my thoughts instantly turn to events I'd sooner forget if I could. And yet, that's not happening today. In fact, I feel almost happy. I'm reminded of my younger days. I used to fall asleep looking forward to the day. This is definitely a good thing, but why so suddenly? Did 
something inside me changed. I remember the words Kana told me as we were working out the cherry blossom trees right after the opening ceremony. I can remember them clearly, even now. Could that be the reason? I clearly do feel less despondent than before. Yeah, it's probably just the drowsiness, all good. Why not my thoughts become a sleep a sleepy muddled mess? I guess I'll just go to sleep. My eyes grow heavy. And soon enough I'm fast asleep. And with that We're on April nineteenth. So I'm gonna stop here. And in the next part, we continue. Stay tuned, more Girls in Glasses, right after this. Thanks so much for watching.